Ash, there are a thousand people watching right now. There are a thousand people watching right now. Do you know what that means? What does that mean? That means there's like at least 500 people who haven't seen this yet. Oh, oh Jesus oh, Christ. Happy hippo. There's all kinds of people here who have not yet experienced the wonder that is disembodied orgasm hippo. How have you done? And that's when I got the shotgun, Your Honor. Hey, man. If if the kitten strip club was fine, if... I, I wouldn't define that as fine. I think that's a brilliant fucking business model. You have a strange definition of the word brilliant. Okay, so um Catherine couldn't make it this week. She's uh she was delayed. So um the audience had to research. She say kiss them for me. I might be delayed. Yes. The audience had to do our research tonight uh, in total. Oh. In a hurry. It's some scary shit, dear. I'm I'm just gonna gonna put that out there for you. It's always some scary shit. Scary oh, shit is what we do. You don't know. You just don't know. Bring it. Bring it. Okay. Bring it. All right. Oh, I don't have my hippo ring on. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. Each it's week. Over there. I don't. Each week, Catherine goes out in the world wide web, which she did this week, and finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings it back here. Same what we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And oh god, I'm just looking over this list. Let's start with our wheelhouse, shall we? Never do which you, wheelhouse? Because we have a few. We have a few. Um, you like doing stuff with your family? I'm gonna reserve answer on that until I find out what kind of stuff we're talking about. You know, you know, barbecues and. And and going out and maybe uh, you know picnics or playing some sports. You ever do that kind of stuff with your family? Yes. Well, um, this is our our first one here, and oh god, father son charged following nude street brawl. Police say. Really. Oh, this one is this one is all kinds of amazing. Um, a bloody flight. This is from Alaska. A bloody fight between a naked father and son trashed their spinnered home and spilled it in the street early Friday. Anchorage police said it was 6 a.m. at the house uh, when an argument between an 18 year old and his 39 year old father turned violent. Father later told police that both men were high on ecstasy, LSD and marijuana. When they started started fighting over drugs and a woman. And they were both naked? Both naked. Both both. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask. They were both naked. They were both drugged out to fuck all. Yes. And they were fighting over a woman. Yes. Was the woman there? Like, was this the worst three-way ever? <laughs> oh, God. Don't you have to ask? Don't you? Did no one else think that? Someone else thought that. Hey, son, uh, why don't we uh, get real fucking high on every single drug we have and then uh, have sex with this woman together? Okay, Dad. Well, I'm assuming they did all the drugs first, and then that seemed like a better idea. Leave it to Beaver, this is not. You know, it's getting it's getting harder and harder these days to teach your kids about the birds and the bees. And sometimes they need hands on experience. <laughs> sometimes you have to go the lab practical route. No, no. Get your hands off. How's it just, just say it. Next, I'm just saying, do, I mean, don't you have to ask? Like, no, you don't. They're both naked and totally fucked up and fighting over a girl. Like, don't you wonder if there was a naked girl in that house somewhere? Like, oh my God. Actually, what I'm wondering is how Thanksgiving is going to play out this year. 
they won't remember any of this. <laughs> Let's yeah honest. yeah they're not gonna remember they shit. don't remember any of this now they say someone in the channel sarah ann says i am officially not allowed to have kids don't worry i'm not planning on it i'm a professional aunt the world is safe from me passing along my psychosis except to my nieces and nephews speaking of kids speaking of reasons not to have oh. kids um you remember being a teenager right both of us, it was a long time ago, but... Unfortunately, I do. Yeah, it sucked. Uh, my awkward phase went from, like, age 5 to age 20. Do you have the... Or, uh, or current. I mean, I whatever. Do you have that section in, in high school where you did some stupid fucking things, and you have no idea why? I was a real goody-goody in high school. Never did any of the stupid shit? No, I'm doing all the stupid shit now. I was no, I was a real goody goody. Well, this guy, this kid, he he is not. Let's let's have a look at his picture there. See that everybody? Put him up on the big screen. There you go. Have a look. Teen tries to steal soda, gets stuck in the vending machine. Hit the wrong button, sir. Um. 17-year-old boy got in way over his head when he tried to steal a soda from a vending machine, but came stuck in the machine's receiving slot. Please say the incident happened around 5 a.m. Sunday morning. Uh, this is from San Diego. Uh, the teen, who police say is a student at Sweetwater High School, got his arm stuck in the receiving slot of a vending machine in an attempt to steal a soda and got wedged in the slot. Firefighters, police, paramedics, and trolley security all showed up on the scene to assist getting the high school student out of the Coke machine. That's so... how I want to die. <laughs> oh. Trapped in a Coke machine. So... I can go happy. <laughs> so <laughs> She just popped in to say free... that. Was the free soda worth the lifetime of humiliation? Because you will never live this down. No. The rest of your high school, you're going to be that guy with the Coke machine. And at the 20 year reunion, you're going to be, oh my God. You were the guy. Jones, remember that time you fucking got stuck in the Coke machine? Which is, by the way, why I've not gone to either of my high school reunions. Not because I got stuck in a Coke machine, but just, you know. Oh, God. Just, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a wonderful sentence. That's Firefighters, so police, paramedics, and security all showed up to assist in getting the high school student out of the Coke machine. D. A. Scott Jr. makes a good point. This being what the fuck is wrong with you, I was expecting other body parts to have gotten stuck in the car. Yeah. It's almost too tame for us, considering he wasn't trying to fuck that Coke machine. Too tame, you say? So, have you ever used Craigslist? Challenge. Have you ever used Craigslist? For anything? like? Uh, you... um, I've looked for jobs on Craigslist. Not those kind. Everybody <laughs> shut the fuck up. Um, no, I have not had success finding a job on Craigslist. You, uh, you ever tried to sell anything on Craigslist? No. Well, the person in our next story did try to sell something on Classified. Um, you sent me the same link again. I haven't sent it to you yet. I'm, oh, huh, I'm just, okay. I'll, I'll give it to you now because this is just holy fuck. Um, Baby advertised for sale. CPS Tusk custody, mom in police custody. Authority, this is from Dallas, Texas. Authority said they received a report on Wednesday of a woman advertising the sale of her baby boy in a classified advertisement. Boy was in the chair, care of child protective services while the mother undergoes police questioning. Caller told authorities the baby was advertised for sale by the mother for $4,000. $4,000. That's a steal. You want a baby. The woman who's from out of state said she came to the Dallas area with the intent to buy the baby named Eden, but got cold feet. Yeah, got cold feet and called authorities. Okay. I okay. just you don't you don't call the cops because you've just called the cops on yourself. By the way, I was gonna buy the baby, you up but intending I, to buy that baby, I was gonna buy a baby, but I just felt bad about it. So you know, this week in how to be a better criminal, don't rat yourself the fuck out. There's a Fifth Amendment. Well, don't put this I'm shit in this tip. 
Don't put baby for sale in the classifieds. That too. For I mean, Christ's sake. I mean, everybody knows you get a better deal for babies on eBay. I mean, this, this is not exactly clandestine behavior. This baby will be the bouncer at the kitten strip club. <laughs> Still on the kitten strip club thing. Can you They're know? on board, dude. Not letting that your, one go, your, are you? Your audience wants it. My audience wants a lot of, of course, things. Of course, your audience are also teddy bear fuckers, we learned last week, so I don't know what that says about anything. Jesus Christ. Why would... Why? <sighs> How do you not understand it is illegal to sell a baby? Yeah, and also... that. Well, here's the thing. Like, this is double stupid because one, you don't understand that it's illegal to sell your baby. Two, you don't understand that you could get a lot more for a baby than four thousand dollars. This is like stupid blackjack where you split your tens. There you Jesus Christ. Yeah. I they, did she just think no one would notice? I'll just put the baby thing in here. But between the refrigerator and the pet turtle, no one's going to notice I'm selling a baby. Well, you want somebody to notice because otherwise you're never going to sell that baby. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you don't sell the baby, how are you getting the flat screen, you know? Exactly. You know? It's just, Jesus Christ. Priorities. <sighs> Speaking of uh, how to be a better criminal... This really should... You need to do that video series, I swear to you. Um, how many times have we found imbeciles who have gotten tripped up by, uh, by Facebook? How many at this point? Oh my god, too many. Got another one. Got another one. Robber who fled Oregon. Tripped up by Facebook posts. James Tyndall skipped out of his state this spring rather than attend drug treatment and follow other conditions as he accepted to avoid prison after pleading guilty to robbery in 2010. But rather do everything possible to avoid detection, he used Facebook to taunt his probation officer and write angry messages about the judge who sentenced him. Fresh out of another state, Tyndall wrote on April 20th, Catch me if you can. Later signed a rant about the criminal justice system the one who got away and made such posts as, quote, I'm in Alabama. Oh, well, that's good. You can't find me. I'm in Alabama. Okay, I know in the movies, the criminal mastermind always, like, taunts Sherlock Holmes or whoever with, like, clue clues. Not a website with a GPS that will tell them exactly which internet cafe you're taunting them from. Like, you gotta be a little fucking smarter than that. Like, you wanna be Windemere all fucking with Agent Cooper on season two of Twin Peaks? Yeah, I went deep cut on you. <laughs> you gotta be a little smarter than that. You can't be like, dear Facebook, I'm in Alabama. Stupid Oregon cop hasn't caught me yet. No. You gotta start mailing chess pieces and fucking postcards from the wrong state with with like postmarks from Canada and shit. Nobody makes the effort anymore, you know? No, it's in the craftsmanship. We just we don't have the same quality of criminal we once did. No. I I'm gonna have to take up a life of crime just to show these bitches how it's done. This way you realize what you're driving me to. Like I'm gonna have to become a fucking Bond villain. <laughs> it gets better, um after they brought him back, they they did, in fact, catch him. They brought him back in front of the same judge he had bitched out on Facebook and criticized. Um, in tears, he pled for leniency, crying. Tyndall admitted, I messed up. Really? Really? Did you? You think? A doy? Fucking moron. I messed up. Yes, you did. And you're pleading for leniency. After, her, her, you can't find me. They're not going to give you leniency, sir. Do not taunt happy fun judge. What happened to our Hannibal Lecters, you know? I know. What happened to, to, to the really great criminals? 
This guy couldn't even be like a like a Batman villain on not the comic books, like on the '60s show with Adam West. It's not even a Batman villain. Goddamn. Okay, so um, like a Kim Possible villain. Yeah, maybe. Um, we've got more travel, stupid, and oh god, this is this is. You're not going to believe this has actually happened, but this, 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 oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, there's no way to build up to this one. Swede Nets refund after flying with dead man. A Swedish woman has received compensation from Kenya Airways after having to fly from Europe to Tanzania, sitting next to a man who had died shortly after takeoff. Huh. Well, to be fair, what were they going to do about it? Put him somewhere! Well, did they know? Did they think he was just... Well, he was, he was sweating and having convulsions, uh, and um, the air, airport staff put out a call for medical help, and while the ailing man was subs subsequently given cardiac massage... He died a few hours later when the uh, Kenya Airways staff seemingly baffled by the incident and unsure of their next course of action. Peterson was obliged to sit only a narrow aisle away from the dead man for the remainder oh. of her overnight overnight flight. All right. So they figured out he was dead and just didn't even move him. Nope. That's 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 a problem. And guess what? H guess how much her refund was for? Seven hundred thirteen dollars, about half the cost of her ticket. Half. Well, did you read her quote? Huh. Of course it was unpleasant, but I'm not a person who makes a fuss. <laughs> you know, I, I'm all about <laughs> being a bad customer because I work in retail and I am all about trying to be a good customer. I over tip. I say please and thank you to waiters. You know, I'll let shit fly, but no pun intended. But there are times when it's okay to kick up a little bit of a fuss. And when the flight attendants come over and go, well, he dead. Ginger ale? <laughs> it's okay to kick up a fuss. Especially it's okay to be like, hey, maybe you could move my seat. Or maybe you could move the dead guy to the cargo hold. Especially considering, you know what happens immediately after you die? You go to heaven? Well, not us. Other people. Everything in your body relaxes. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going there. I thought we'd keep this classy for a change, but... And then the gases begin. Because you, you can be... There, there'd be a dead guy in a mortuary and they'll start making sounds out of their mouth like... <gasps> Because gases are fucking escaping and shit. Really? Yes. It is not. It is, is not. Is that like the kid? Did you see? There's a kid. Was it in Mexico? Kid was dead. Dead ass dead. And at his wake, sat up in the coffin and asked his father for a glass of water. And then he died again. Yeah. Like, that's not a random, like, Dad, can I have a glass of water? <laughs> But yeah, you, you, you don't want to be near a dead body for an extended period of time, especially a freshly dead body. There, there's a difference between a mortuary and everything they do to, to prepare I'm a body. I'm was that I don't want to be near any kind of dead body. Yeah, yeah. You just, for a long time. A freshly dead body is, is not your friend. Not in any way, shape, or form. Not for an overnight plane. That is, I, I'm not the kind of person who makes a fuss. Really, lady? There are times when it's okay to make a fuss. And finally this week... Um... New York. I've, I finally got to go to New York last year. It's an amazing place. All kinds of things happen in New York. All kinds of things. Wonderful things, terrible things, smelly things. And... Just... Yeah... A anything you can name. Anti-Semitic Elmo? They got it. 
Anti-Semitic Elmo handcuffed, removed by ambulance from New York Central Park. And oh, you know what makes this even better? You know what makes this story even better? Because it's coming, you know. Guess. Just guess. I, I, I'm still stuck on anti-Semitic Elmo. We got video! Excellent. Casey, yeah, this is like, I don't, is like his stick? <laughs> I am, I am completely lost here. And if so, why Elmo? Yes. I'm, I'm just, I'm lost. Is Elmo not kosher and I'm unaware? A uh, man who haunts uh, the unidentified man, police say he was not arrested, he was removed from the vicinity of the Central Park Zoo, where he alternately posed for photos of park visitors, screamed curses, and launched into diatribes about assorted okay. Jewish conspiracies. I want to know the tourist that's like, honey, honey, get a picture with the ranting and raving anti-Semite Elmo. <laughs> get we in there. We can show the neighbors when we get home. Get the picture. I want to know who wanted to take pictures with this guy. I don't care that it's a guy in an Elmo suit. When he's shouting psycho babble, maybe you find another tourist trap. Like, I want to know who these people were that were like, oh my God, we totally have to get a picture of that. That, that is the New York experience. He's not the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> not the Empire State Building, not Times Square. Psycho Elmo. It's the most adorable anti-Semite I've ever seen in my life. I'm sorry, how could you stay mad at that face? Look I, at him. You know, you know how I can stay mad at Elmo? Because I babysat a nephew that loved Elmo for like two years. I can stay mad at Elmo for fucking ever. Yeah, if you... Also, because he's a fucking Sesame Street like cousin Oliver. Like my Sesame Street didn't have no fucking Elmo. I had Snuffleupagus. <laughs> then they fucking Cousin Oliver that shit with this Elmo. Fuck Elmo! No, thank you. So he's not exactly tarnishing the Elmo brand here for you. You didn't care for him to begin with. Um, yeah, after having the, cost the head from the costume removed, he was placed in the ambulance, brought to the New York Presbyterian Hospital for observation. I'm pretty sure the first observation they're going to make is he cray cray. It's cray. Because, okay, if you have a problem. So it's a little warm in New York right now. Like today wasn't quite as bad, but still it got up to like 80 and it rained a lot. So that's wet for gross. Well, the, the point is, if you have a problem like this, if, if you have, you know, a gripe, legitimate or in this case not um you try to present your argument even on the street you've seen street preachers mm -hmm. you try to present your argument i was walking through times square with some friends once and they had i don't know if you've ever seen like the nation of islam hold a rally this happens in new york a lot where you get these guys in like the louis farrakhan bow yeah. tie and and they get everyone together and they have big banners and everything and they talk about you know black power and the evils of the white people and everything mm -hmm. or, you know like I'm not you do about them do your thing but we're walking through times square and i mean look at me i'm the whitest white girl that was ever white like i'm fucking white paper looks at me and is like damn that's white and we're walking through times square with, with like me and a bunch of people and they just and we're, we're walking through this rally and we're like right in the middle of the crowd when they start going off on the eat on how the ultimate evil is the white woman <laughs> we are in the middle of this crowd and i'm awkward just like, fuck me running i am going to die this is how i die like holy shit. i'm just and you know i kind of stick out like I, I glow blue in the sun i got this hair like it's it's tough to miss me so i'm just like Oh my god. Ugh. Like head down. And the people I was with were just like, yeah, we gotta go. Now, now just to make that entire memory worse, 
Imagine it was a rally of Muppets. I wouldn't stick out as much in a rally of Muppets. <laughs> really? I think I'd be safer. Um, okay, so, so what have we learned this week? I guess uh, if, you are, if you do have, a, have an argument you wish to present in public, the Muppet costume really is going to put a dent in your credibility. I'm just saying. Unless your argument is Muppets are awesome, in which case, yeah. Um, my Muppet is in the other room, guys. Sorry, I can't get it now. Um, yeah, you have yeah, your own like, Muppet. Muppet. I do have a Muppet, but it's not within reach. Um, we learned if you're, run if you're on the lamb, stay the fuck off Facebook. Yes! If you're on the lamb, ignore the lamb. Why do they keep doing this shit? It's, it's the internet. Because the damn kids today don't understand that some things don't belong on the internet. 20 years from now, we will have no viable candidate for president because every single one of them will have pictures of them sucking a donkey's dick with a beer funnel up their ass. On the internet. Because the damn kids today don't understand. Would that make them a Democrat then? No, that would obviously make them a Republican. <laughs> But Democrats it's the donkey there. Pictures get it. Democrats put those pictures on the post. Yeah, but it's the donkey there. The donkey was what I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we've learned that four thousand is way too low to your. Don't lowball your baby sale. Yeah. You know. Aim high to start with. A human life is a valuable thing. Go at least five grand. At least five. At least five. Because that's the difference between the big screen and the plasma. Exactly. You know? The Blu-ray. And not don't forget the 5.1. 7 1. You get a 7 1. I mean, easy. Okay, I don't know what that means. Speakers. Surround. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm not really very techy. Uh, We've learned that there are times when it's okay to make a fuss, and one of those yes. times is when someone fucking dies <laughs> and you complain. <laughs> How often is that? A time when it's okay <laughs> to 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 maybe hassle the help a little bit. How 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 long? How often is that going to happen? <laughs> I mean, this this is scary, uh, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think you'd ever have to say something like that. But this job has taught me that there is no sentence that I should put out of my potential vocabulary yeah um we we've learned that they want us to run for president <laughs> that's such a bad idea you guys don't even know are we both legally uh, we're, we're eligible aren't we we are of age yes mm -hmm. we could run for president i i think we would do terrible things to this country yeah i would spend most of my time trying to keep you from pushing the button it's big, red, like shiny, and candy light. My job would be like, no, do not launch the nukes. No, bad, president, bad. <laughs> I don't um, want that to be my life. There's a reason I don't have children. Yes, but if I aim them at the RIAA, it'll be okay. Um, we've learned that, uh, you know, you, you could like to buy the world of Coke, but don't jam your hand up the Coke but machine. Buy the world of Coke. Yeah, buy the world of Coke. That's just fucking up your karma. I mean, really, how much is a Coke? A buck fifty? It's a lot than like it used to be, but it's a buck fifty. Or you get your hand stuck in there and you have a three ring circus trying to pull your dumb ass out. And a lot of hospital bills. And from then on, you're known to your friends as as vending as vending boy. They will yeah. never let you forget it. Yeah. Thirty years later at the reunion, hey, it's the vending boy. Hey. So and uh, finally, uh, we learned um, it is good to do things together as a family, just not all the things. Yeah, not all the drugs and the public nudity. Yeah, I don't... Because... Th you're fla Everything's flapping! Every the family that prays <sighs> together stays together. Just the family that trips balls together... <sighs> That's not a thing. That's not, that's, no one ever put that on a pillow. <laughs> Just the, the naked, when you're in a naked drugged fight, everything must be flapping. So there, there's got to be some contact that, Jesus God, don't ever do that. 
that's Dad. your that's your primary concern yes that's the thing that concerns you that that if you got in a fight with your dad and you were both naked your penises might touch each other that's your problem with that whole story yes you're not a guy you don't get it i'm just saying there's something so wrong yes with you but he's flapping and naked. everyone's like oh tara's so fucked up oh my god tara's so crazy that's what you're worried about not the lsd not the whatever other drugs they were on not that the channel not is agreeing touch. with me. The channel but is their penises might touch each other. That's really the least of your problems at that point. Because in <laughs> true, general, true, there are yeah, things your penis is going to touch that you are not going to like. <laughs> that <laughs> things to put on a pillow in jail. There are things your penis going <laughs> to you're going to touch your penis. And penises will touch you that yes. you might not enjoy. That someone needs to embroider that. There you go.